Josie McDaniel Burkett is our interpreter today. Y'all, thank you very much for being here. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, have some visitors again, and they've been here before. This is this effort with this hurricane, uh, which was uh, not as bad as predicted, and with the flood, which was as bad as predicted, and is still occurring in South Carolina, uh, oh, in in Georgetown, Sacoste, Conway, and places in between. We're having enormous flooding. As you know, it started in Chiral. They'd never seen flooding like that. Then it went back to Nichols. They have seen flooding like that. We had flooding in Bennettsville and Marlboro County. We've never had floods like this, as you know, where a hurricane came straight into the state. I was in North Carolina and didn't go through in about 12 hours like Hugo and others did, but stayed for three days. We've never seen this much water. In that part of the state, uh, in the PD area, we've had three, all three river systems were flooded, not only from the water from South Carolina, but that it came in the second wave from, from North Carolina. So this is unprecedented, and we are still in full uh, battle mode in Georgetown County, in Ori County. The water has not yet crested in Conway has certainly not crested in Sacoste, is not crested in Georgetown. So we're still fighting as we're preparing for the third phase. We had the hurricane and then the flood and the third phase is the repair and the, the fixing and the, the taking care of the citizens, the needs of the citizens. I want to give you a very important telephone number. It's 1-800-621-FEMA. 1-800-621-FEMA. Everyone in those areas and everyone that is interested in helping with this effort should have that number written down. That is the number to call to ask for assistance. And assistance is, will be provided. There are various programs and operations that are being put into effect. This is going to be a long-term effort, but we're making plans and getting all the assets available just as we did in response in preparation to the hurricane and the flood. Also, another thing is everyone remember, if you have insurance on your home or on your business, go ahead now and file and make contact with your insurance company to see about making your claim. Don't wait. Go ahead and do that now. So that's two things to do. Call your insurance company and call FEMA if you believe that you are, are entitled to any sort of assistance under any policy or, or you have needs, call those two numbers. I also want to mention that we've had uh, another declaration for individual assistance. Chesterfield County has been declared earlier, so has Marlboro, Dillon, Marion, and Ori, and we have just a few minutes ago, Georgetown County has been declared a, an area for individual assistance. That's very important to our people. And we uh, say again, before I ask Mr. Long to, to uh, address you, is this has been a great partnership that we've built in South Carolina, not only among all of our local assets and people and institutions, not only the civilian, but the military, as, as well as the, the, the federal government uh, under President Trump's leadership. As you know, we've, we've had cabinet agents, uh, agencies and the, uh, the officials themselves, various secretaries here and calling, and we've been in com uh, constant communication. And of course, one of those at the top of the list is FEMA. So here is, is the administrator, Brock Long. Thank you, Governor. Ms. Long. Appreciate yes. it. Uh, Governor, we appreciate your strong leadership, and, and as well as the strong leadership of South Carolina D uh, EMD and, and the National Guard. A lot of the partners are coming together, and that's what this is about. Um, uh, disaster response and recovery. Um, works best when it's locally executed, state managed, and federally supported. And I'm here to be on the ground to make sure we're doing everything to uh, meet the governor's demands on uh, helping South Carolinians overcome this disaster. The, the, the problem is, is that the event is still ongoing and it's going to be frustrating for many of those as this water continues to creep down the basins. Um, you know, we're trying to do everything that we can to preposition commodities and preposition support to be ready to help not only individuals. Um, but, but also the communities to repair their infrastructure once the water starts to recede. So we have a lot of uh, FEMA staff in the field working hand in glove with uh, our state partners, ready to uh, push forward case management, set up disaster recovery centers so people can go in and understand what they may or may not be entitled to when it comes to help. 
But let me be clear, FEMA's, FEMA's assistance is designed to kickstart recovery. Um, you know, this is also a time where neighbor needs to help neighbor and people need to get involved. If you're interested in helping South Carolinians that have been impacted, go to envoad.org, N-V-O-A-D.org to see how you can donate cash or get involved with some of the voluntary organizations that are going to be on the ground. And uh, that's all part of it. Neighbor helping neighbor all the way to the federal government is what is needed in South Carolina at this time. And we're pushing everything that we can to push forward. So I want to reiterate the, you know, what the governor said. 800-621-FEMA if you live in Chesterfield, Ory, Dillon, Marion, Marlboro, or Georgetown County. And uh, that will start the, the process. You can also register online at disasterassistance.gov. You can also download the FEMA app. Uh, where you can also uh, enter into assistance. But the, the road to recovery is going to be long and lengthy. FEMA will be here with the state of South Carolina for many years as a result of going through this. And, Governor, thanks again for your partnership. Well, we appreciate your great help. All the any questions? How many FEMA workers overall in the state do you know? Off the top of your head? I don't know. We have a little over 400. A little over 400 in the state right now, but that number that number is going to grow uh, as we're able to get into areas and support people with uh, disaster recovery centers and disaster support, uh, uh, survivor assistance teams on the ground. And do we know how many individuals have applied for assistance so far in South Carolina? Mr. Yes. Yep. Come on. Forward. We've we've had over 4,000 who have registered so far, and as of yesterday, there was about three quarters of a million dollars that had been approved and about a half million dispersed. Yeah. Can you walk us through the process if someone calls that number, kind of what they'll be asked, what they need to have on hand, and things like that? Sure. So when someone calls and registers, if they have uninsured or underinsured losses, then their information will be taken and and typically an inspector would be assigned to come out and inspect their dwelling. We know in this circumstance that there will be many houses that will be inaccessible for a period of time, but there's potential for them to receive rental assistance once there's a verification. So later, if, if their dwelling is inaccessible, they need to call FEMA again when it becomes accessible. That's a very important step and request that second inspection. Once the inspection is done, uh, what, for whatever damages that they are eligible, they can either receive a check or direct deposit, depending on their choice. Yeah. Okay. Is FEMA having to respond more to, to this storm because I did sit for so long over us um, than like Hurricane Matthew or, or some of the previous storms you've gone through? Well, I mean, each storm's unique. It's, it's hard to compare one hurricane to the other. I mean, um, Floyd in 1999 brought devastating storm surge north of Charleston and had a very quick forward speed that had high inland winds that pushed all the way through the state into North Carolina and very little rainfall associated uh, compared to this. Anytime you have a storm uh, that we just went to with Florence where it loses its steering currents and stalls out, this is exactly what happens. It's a rainfall event. A lot of the country thinks that Florence came and went, but unfortunately a lot of that water it takes for weeks for it to process down and uh, the real frustrating part uh, for the citizens impacted is they're not going to be able to go home into these isolated communities for a matter of weeks and so uh, we understand that frustration and we're trying to do everything we can to preposition to be ready to support them. Yeah, but each event's different. Dr. Stinson, can you talk a little bit about the, uh, the flooding that you're seeing in Georgetown? We took a helicopter flight last week and just saw that these were areas that were just completely devastated by flooding. Talk a little bit about those areas. Well, right now we've, uh, we're estimating that about 11,000 people have relocated statewide. I don't have a good, well, actually probably um, maybe as many as 3,000 from the Georgetown area have already relocated and they expect to be flooded out. Um, and I'll give you some statewide preliminary damages, and these are going to change. Uh, they're, they're, they're not terribly accurate at this point, but just as a point of reference, right now we're looking at 976 homes with minor damage, uh, probably a, over, a little over 1,000 with major damage, and right now we're only tracking about 46 houses that we consider destroyed. Uh, but as the governor said, this is unfolding. We're still doing... Uh, recovery operations in the in the northern PD uh, but in the southern PD where we're talking about Ori and Georgetown we have not seen the full uh, you know flooding and impacts of that flooding right now and it's going to be for a couple of days before we do see that. George Stenson or possibly uh, General Livingston, what would you say to those people who want to go home as you said this might take weeks what would you say to them that they want to go home but do so only until it's safe? Well, right, and what they need to do is they need to follow the directions of their local uh, authorities, their county emergency managers, and they'll let people know when it's safe to go back in. But it's, it's 
critical. If the local emergency managers and the local authorities say you should evacuate, you should relocate, then you should do that. It's just a, it's a life safety issue. Yeah. And I would just add to that, the, the waters are very swift as, as they continue to rise. Uh, and uh, it, it's very deceptive. You get there, oh, I can take a boat in and I can check my house or something like that. But uh, those boats can get swept away. And then we're talking a rescue operation. And all rescue operations carry a, a large amount of risk with them. And so you put everybody in danger. So patience. Just take time to uh, let the waters go down, let them go down completely, uh, then walk into your home. Have we had any concrete progress on folks being able to go back in certain areas to their homes? Uh, we've been able to get into, uh, of course, the Sherall area as uh, the, the waters have receded there. Uh, in Nichols, uh, we're starting to uh, get back into Nichols. So, uh, yes, as the waters recede, and, and again, it's a local decision. Uh, either the mayor, the county administrators, uh, they, will, they will tell people when it's safe, but that is in consultation with all of the rescue workers, all the, uh, uh, the, the weather people, uh, because uh, as you know, we, we dealt with the flash flood, then we dealt, dealt with the river rise, so uh, we don't want people to go back in on, at a false crest or something like that, but uh, uh, as a Director Simpson talks, uh, please make sure you coordinate your re-entry with the local authorities, because uh, they have the best information. Just to go back to FEMA for a little bit, you know, I, I have to ask, for someone who may be watching this and they're going through this period of time and they're just overwhelmed and they're trying to figure out really what are my next steps, trying to get through all the information, figure out where do I go from here, could you succinctly break down, this is for FEMA, succinctly break down what are some of the five steps that they need to take in order to move into the next phase of where they need to go to be able to recover? Well, that, that is why we are here. Yes, ma'am. So, as, as the governor said, the first step is if you're insured, call your insurance company because that is the first line of assistance. And then the, the government has worked between FEMA and the Small Business Administration to link up our systems. So when someone registers with us, there is a process that that goes through. They may receive some immediate assistance. They will likely potentially also receive a package from the Small Business Administration that they need to complete in order to take the next step. Now, over the next few days, we've already begun uh, coordinating with the counties. We will be opening what are called disaster recovery centers. That's a state federal joint effort. There will be other agencies there, both federal and state, as well as locals many times, voluntary organizations, anyone that can provide assistance in that area. And folks, when after they register and receive that package, is the best time for them to go to that disaster recovery center, but they can go anytime when it's open. They can also call that 1 800 621 FEMA number anytime as a helpline to get assistance, to ask questions about what they should do next. Within each community there's typically an organization called a long-term recovery group many of them are already stood up from previous events for counties that don't have those they may stand those up for future events and those are made up of sometimes county officials and voluntary organizations and they will be able to assist people in walking through next steps there are also case managers case workers that are available you know there are a number of organizations and agencies that assist people. That's what they do. That's what we do. We're here to serve. So again, as Director Stinson said, follow your local emergency management. Do what they say do. Call your insurance company first. Call the FEMA 800 number if you have uninsured or underinsured losses. And then watch for those opportunities for those disaster recovery centers. Document. And yes, thank document. you. Document and the actions that you take uh, that's right. to uh, muck out your house or any repairs as well. Keep receipts. Right. Don't wait to start those repairs. Start them immediately. Keep your receipts. Take pictures. All of that. Don't stop the recovery process waiting for anyone, but do document that process. Okay. And with a flood, do everything you can to guard against mildew and mold. You know, getting drywall out. You know, trying to you know getting wet carpet out as quickly as you can because uh, you may be able to save the house. Uh, by the steps you take initially going in and getting um, anything in there that could create mold or mildew. Last question. Governor, as far yes. as the, the two van deaths in Horry County, a lot of people want to know why those deputies were on the road. They said it was because they were under court order. 
Should there not be a, a loosening of requirements for those kind there, of orders? So there, there are a lot of a lot of improvements that can be made in all systems. That one of the main rules that we've been uh, going by, and one that Ms. Turner just referred to, was listen to the authorities that are studying and giving advice. And one of them always is don't go on roads that have water, particularly water flowing over them, because that is a great source of danger. And all of these losses are tragic. Uh, they, we are deeply concerned about those losses. There's nothing we can do about the hurricane coming or the floods coming. That's out of our control. But our response is, is what we can control. We have done extremely well in South Carolina with the great team South Carolina, which includes our federal partners. And we are deeply sorry and praying for those who are suffering losses and particularly lives. Thank you. Thank you.